Hello, Stan here. Today I'm starting a new series about reverse engineering game shaders. Specifically, I will be using Jagged Alliance back in action. This game uses DirectX 9 and a real-time lighting library, Light Sprint. I have written a Blender importer that can import the game models, including the rigging data. The export I wrote is limited to exporting static models. I decided that it would be a good idea to go back and take a closer look at the game's shaders to refine my understanding of the model format used by this game. This new video series will be broken up into several pieces. In the first segment, I'm going to talk about what calls are made by BIA to draw a weapon. I'm using an old tool called PIX because it provides a wealth of information. First thing I want to do is to figure out which draw calls draw the model I'm interested in which is this pistol. Now, since I wrote an exporter, I scaled up this weapon because otherwise it would be pretty tiny. So the first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what draw calls draw this weapon. So I'm going to debug this pixel, which will show all the draw calls that draw to that pixel. And I will go to the last draw call and click on it. And then look at the mesh to verify. Yep, that's the pistol. Let's look at the render. Yep, that's the pistol there. Uh, let's go back a call. Pistol disappears. Pistol appears. So this is the draw call that's used to draw this weapon. Now, the way DirectX 9 works for something to be drawn a lot of state information has to be set up. Vertex information such as position, normal, texture coordinates, projection matrices, pixel information, you know, what textures you're using, uh, how to sample them, etc. So if we look at the previous draw call and then look down through the calls, these different calls set up different state information for the draw call of the pistol. Now, I'm not going to go through each one of them. Um, they do different things. Uh, you can look up the documentation. The names are kind of self-explanatory. What we're interested in is we want to look at the device state. So if you look at the draw index primitive call, and then right click here and then view the device. So this is the device state information. Input state, index buffer, so this is to tell how the faces are set up. Streams, this is the vertex streams. And they contain the information for the vertex render or for the vertex uh, shader and so what it looks like I've already reverse engineered these things partially another vertex stream that's unknown another vertex stream that's unknown tessellation state not used vertex state vertex declaration so this uh, tells us the layout of the data in the vertex stream. That's how I was able to figure this out. So if you look at the layout that I have here, it matches the vertex declaration here. Vertex shader. So this is the vertex shader used by this draw call to draw the pistol. Boolean constant registers, integer constant registers, floating point constant registers, which are used extensively by the vertex shader. We'll look at that later. And some other state information. Pixel state. How we do the culling, counterclockwise culling, rasterization, fog, 
Okay, samplers. So in DirectX 9, you, spe you basically bind a texture to a sampler. So let's look at this first sampler. View texture. Ah, that looks like the diffuse texture. Exit out of this. Okay, sampler one. Ah, it looks like either a bump map or some kind of a normal map. What's this one? Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one either. So in the pixel shader, these samplers are used, and when we reverse engineer the pixel shader, we'll look at how they're used to figure out what they are. Now let's look at the pixel shader. Floating point constants, we'll look and see how they're being used in the pixel shader. All right. Output state, depth stencil surface. Oh, nothing there. Render targets. Ah, okay, so this is where the render output goes. It goes to this surface. All right. So Pix is able to provide us with a wealth of information about the state of DirectX renderer. And um, in the next segment, we'll use a different tool to modify the shaders, the vertex shader and the pixel shader, to figure out what all this information means. Thanks for watching the first segment of Reverse Engineering Game Shader series. There will be more in the way. Tune in next time and keep your powder dry.